Sorry, girl. Hallelujah. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Uh -huh. Talk to me. Oh, yeah. Don't do that. Uh -huh. Calm down. Quiet. All right. So, uh, there's a lot of excitement going on. I believe the Lord is going to. Um, am I recording? Yeah. I believe the Lord is. Uh, he is. Um, He is doing something. Uh, do you guys want me to move this way? You guys want me to move? Get closer to you? Okay. As long as we're not in camera, that's good. Okay. That's, that's why I guess I did it this way so you guys wouldn't be in camera. That's $2. What's that? You have to charge you $2 for the camera. Per minute? <laughs> guys, I think God is trying to get our attention with uh, where we are. Uh, this is for the children also. Uh, the Lord reminds us constantly in Matthew. He's, it's, it's the parable of the wicked servant, the, the one where he eats and drinks with the drunk. Something in his heart says, my master delays his coming. So he gets involved with the world. He eats and drinks with the drunk and he beats other servants. He's a servant. He belongs to, to the Lord's house. And he eats and drinks with the drunk. And, and the master will come at a time he doesn't expect and cut him up. So, children, all children, this deals with... So, you know, when I share with people, it's not just for adults. Guys, the kingdom of heaven belongs to the children. This stuff does apply to all ages. Because... Let's face it, are we not children of God and don't all of us, as, as we just listened to Ravenhill, uh, Sermon Jam Agony, he says, you don't need more light, that will make it worse for you in the judgment, you need more obedience. All children, all of us, we need more obedience. God forbid that we don't do what we're supposed to do. He who knows to do the right thing and fails to do it, to him it is sin, James, see James. Father in heaven, I thank you for this message that you have, uh, God, you have given to deliver. Um, Lord Jesus, I tremble at your word. Abba, let us tremble at what you are asking your, of your people this day. Father, I praise you. And I thank you that you are teaching us you're teaching us to worship you in spirit and truth. You're teaching us to fear, reverence, glorify your name. In Jesus' name, any witchcraft that is, wants to come against this message, any divination, any attack, you have no business here. This is a holy ground. This is because God's presence is with us. And you have no business here. We are covered by the blood of Jesus. And uh, any unforgiveness, any bitterness must go, must be repented in Jesus' name. And I thank you for what you're doing in our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. So, a while back, Leanne gave the message, two kinds of worshipers. And she compared Abel and Cain. Uh, you can find that on the channel. Um, and, I'm gonna, and the Lord is showing again. So this message is sort of a continuation of last week in terms of um, trust your feelings or his word. And it's more, um, how much do you trust his word? So <clears throat> I think it's how much do you trust his word? And let's face it, we need more obedience. So go to Matthew 8, verse 5. And I'll show you between Abel. We talked about this before. Abel is the one who worshiped from his heart 
gave the Lord everything. He said, here is all of me, all of my heart. Here's the, the, you know, he was broken and he offered the sacrifice that was pleasing to God in faith. Okay, and we'll see Cain. And guys, this is going to be a very hard message. The Lord showed this to me and I said, oh God. And I pray we are convicted. We as Christians need more of the cross. We don't appreciate the resurrection enough because we don't know how much we've lost. How much, how much of the flesh is in us. My sin is ever before me, Psalm 51. We don't, uh, we don't fear enough. We don't obey enough. We don't, yes, I mean, the worship this evening was amazing. But I think we cherish our comfort too much. And we don't cherish his word enough. Um, so Matthew 8, verse 5. When he entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him pleading with him, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed in terrible agony. I will come and heal him, uh, Jesus told him. Lord, the centurion replied. Let's stop there. What did he call him? Lord. Lord. Boom! Is Jesus your Lord? Is he your master? Let's establish, you know, let's get first things first. Is he your Lord? Or is he just, just bless me? Here's my plan. Here, Lord, please bless this. Please bless our, okay, let me go on. I am not worthy to have you come under my roof, but only say the word and my servant will be cured. Here's what the centurion says. I too am a man under authority, what is he saying there? I know you're under authority and I know you have authority. Having, I have soldiers under my command. I say to this one, go and he goes. And to another, come and he comes. And to my servant or slave, do this and he does it. I know you do the same thing. I know you speak and you must be obeyed. Oh God, where have we failed? You spoke and we have not done it. You guys know what it is. I don't, I mean, I'm not here to condemn. I'm not here to point. These are messages from the Lord. I know I've not obeyed. I know I've not listened. Hearing this, Jesus was amazed and he said to those following him, I assure you, I've not found anyone in Israel with so great a faith. I tell you that many will come from east and west and recline at the table with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. Let me stop there. He says this. This Gentile was considered a dog in Hebrew society. He obeys the voice of a master that doesn't necessarily belong to him, but he knows that's his master. And he obeys that voice. He knows who that is. And he does it in faith. He does it in trust. He says, I know you're on earth. How did he know? Because of the word spoken. Genesis 1. God said, what else do you need? What else do we need? Do we really? Guys, this is examining all of us. Do we really believe what he says? And if we believe it, why aren't we doing it? Why are we hemming and hawing? Why are we making excuses? Why are we sitting on the sidelines, debating, debating. I was talking with someone, tough decisions, that video. I have more people that have watched it than, that, that have been on the subscriber list, or excuse me, uh, email list. Because here's what happened. The day before, when Leanne was in the hospital, I was in anguish. Because I remember just, uh, the joys of having children is they like to make a lot of noise. It's all right, we'll just keep going. Where I looked into her eyes and I said, God, what do I do? And the more she looked at me, it's like deep down my spirit, the Lord was saying, commend her to me. And I said, God, how come I didn't have her to get that unity? He said, son, get out of the way. You know what to do, give her to me. And I did. And I, then the next day I posted the video and all of a sudden, that, that is the number one video. And I'm like, 
Oh God, you had to break me. Because he had to break that thing that said, I want to be able to figure this out. Stop, stop trying to figure it out. Do what you're supposed to do. You know what it is. You know deep down what it is. Here's the conviction. And we need to examine ourselves before the Lord if this is us. But the sons of the kingdom will be thrown into the outer darkness in the place where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And Jesus told the centurion, go as you have believed, let it be done for you. Stop there. Watch this. Let it be done for you as you have believed. And his servant was cured that very hour. Shit. What does that say about the uh, centurion? Oh, did he trust. Because that, sir, that slave was healed. Boom! Like that. Go to Psalm 50. Let me, let me point to you the distinction. Psalm 50, verse 16. But God says to the wicked, and the wicked are defined as the prostitute, drug dealer, murderer. No. We're going to see in a moment. And I want to ask those who are listening, are you one of the wicked? You need to examine yourself before the Lord and, and ask him the hard questions. Lord, am I doing this? Am I doing this? But God says to the wicked, what right do you have to recite my statutes and to take my covenant on your lips? You hate instruction and turn your back on my words. You see a thief, when you see a thief and you make friends with, this, with him and you associate with adulterers, you unleash your mouth for evil and harness your tongue for deceit. You sit maligning your brother, slandering your mother's son. You have done these things and I kept silent and you thought I was just like you, but I will rebuke you and lay out the case before you. Understand this, you who forget God or I will tear you apart and there will be none to rescue you. Whoever sacrifices a thank offering honors me and whoever orders his conduct, I will show him the salvation of God. I will show him Jesus is literally how that's worded in Hebrew. I will reveal to him Yeshua. I will... Show him. I mean, it, proof text. I mean, there's proof text all over the scripture. Jesus is God. I mean, I mm. glory to God. Mm. I love Psalm 118. He will become to me my salvation. Jesus will. God will be manifest. Jesus. Woo! Hallelujah. I didn't plan to go into that, but I got to say it. Okay? He's the everlasting father. Jesus is the everlasting father. How does it all work? I don't know. It, it, it does. I just trust him. Okay, That's, that, that was free, okay? Listen, let me go back. Verse 16. God says to the wicked, how dare you push drugs and sleep around? Is that what he says? Mm -hmm. No. What right do you have to recite my statutes and take my covenant on your lips? How dare you call yourself a Christian? How dare you call yourself a God follower? And I know there are people in other denominations, movements, how dare you say you are following Torah? Yeah, I said it, and I'm going to say it again. How dare you say you're following Torah, keeping the law, and doing all this thing? Your heart is filthy. You're causing division. And you're not doing what's right. How dare you? You're not giving me your heart. You think you're cleaned up on the outside. Psalm 139. This is a hard message. Are we comfortable yet? I'm not angry. I'm, I'm just, it just hurts me. It grieves me. Because in his right hand are pleasures forevermore. If you would let him break you and let him have control and dominion over you instead of you thinking you know what you are doing. Verse 19, God, if only you would kill the wicked, you bloodthirsty men, stay away from me. 
Who are the wicked? They're not the Philistines. They're not the Kushites. They're not the Muslims. They're not Jehovah's Witness. Granted, those have their own issues. You, who invoke you deceitfully. Invoke meaning they call upon you with deception. Your enemies swear by you falsely. Oh, I love God, really? Then obey him and show it. A tree will be known by its fruit. If people are doing things in faith, are you exercising grace? Mercy triumphs over judgment, people. Now, I'm not saying don't call out on sin. There's a way to do it. Where's the love? Where's the forgiveness? Where's the mercy? Where's the kindness? Where's the agony over... Where's the pulling the beam out of your own eye? Recognizing that you are just... You're actually worse than they are. And but for the grace of God, there you go. Spurgeon. Do you guys understand how much we need Jesus every day? And yet... We think we are higher than the next person? No. Your sin is ever before you. Ask yourselves, am I invoking you deceitfully? Or am I broken before you in my personal worship time? When was the last time you wept? Because people have done wrong. When was the last time when somebody... Guys, listen... The inconveniences of life are your cross. Love is inconvenient. Love is risky. Lord, don't I hate those who hate you and detest those who rebel against you? I hate them with extreme hatred. I consider them my enemies. Why? Because they're God's enemies. And if somebody was to slight you or cross you, you're willing to go back and love them? Speak the truth in love? And, and, and there, there's a place for that. Don't get me wrong. Do you forgive them and say, God, I, I forgive these people? I mean, there are people in, in my life I've had to daily say, Lord, don't let me shut them out. Don't let me shut them out. Lord, I'm very angry right now. I need you. We do. We want to hold on to our... Bitterness. We want to hold on to people who've wronged us. Love is love takes no offense. First Corinthians 13. Go say, don't just read it. You can read it and it could be gobbledygook. This book is life to you or death to you. How? It could be ink on a page or it could be your very sustenance. What's the difference? The Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus. This doesn't mean anything to me unless you open it to me and write it upon my heart. Erez, how do you know scripture? I've had other people, they know scripture so well and it just blah, 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 it comes out. And no boast to me. Lord Jesus, write your word upon my heart because I stink at memorizing. I've tried, I've tried Bible memorization and I fail. And I don't remember it. But I said, Lord, write it upon my heart. Leanne, she would openly admit I can't memorize to save my life. But when I said, Lord, you write it upon my heart. Man, that woman spouted off scripture. Just boom, 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 boom. And she can expound on it. Praise Jesus. Is that not what God does? Are we not to be a living example of Jesus Christ who is the living word? Are we not ought to be that living word where it daily convicts us and transforms us and transforms others? Not do we, we, we don't just have God there next to us, side by side in the garden. We have God in us for others. Amen. Yeah. Isaiah 30, 21. We, I quoted it last week. He says this. Whenever you turn to the right or to the left, your ears will hear this command behind you. This is the way walk in it. Well, God, well, uh, Aaron, I don't know how to do this. I don't know if I can, if I can forgive this or speak that. Really? Well, oh Lord, help me to forgive that person. Full sting. Second Peter one three. His divine power has given us everything required for life and godliness through the knowledge of Him, who called us by His own glory and goodness. What more do 
you need. When Jesus said, it is finished, he gave you everything. You don't need anything else. You need to trust his word. He spoke it. Do it. Aaron's, I can't forgive. I don't care. Do it. Aaron's, it hurts. Let it hurt. That's your flesh saying, I don't want to move forward. What do you trust more? You trust your, you trust your flesh or you trust his word? His word says, forgive as you've been forgiven. Colossians 3. Aaron's, I have a hard time with scripture. Colossians 3, let the word dwell richly in you. Aaron's, I can't sing. Addressing one another with psalms, hymns, and spiritual psalms, thanksgiving in your hearts before God. I can't do it. You know what? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I don't have that strength. Isaiah 40, he'll renew your strength as wings of eagles. And I love, I love the Hebrew because it's not renew. Newsflash, it's exchange. Mm. It's not your strength, it's his. Well, I don't have it. You, you didn't ask for it. I, I'm speaking like drill sergeant here, okay? My kids are coming. Well, daddy, this did it. I said, you never asked me. You didn't open up your mouth. It, you gotta believe in your heart and open with your mouth. How do I know I'm forgiven? God says so. And now you need to speak it to yourself. Lord Jesus, I receive the forgiveness. How do I get through this pain? People have asked me. And, and they say, Eris, how are you doing this grieving process? What process? What are you talking about? I love the scripture. We do not grieve as other men who have no hope. I have difficult moments. And my days are filled with joy, peace, and purpose, and vision. How? When Leanne died, I fell on my face. My flesh hurt. There were tears, there was screaming, and the words were, Jesus, I love you. Thank you for 16 years. Thank you. You know what your will is? Or excuse me, God's will for you? Say thank you. Open those flappers. Say thank you, Jesus. It's easy to do it when things are great. Oh, thank you, Jesus, for the beautiful day. Thank you that my bills are paid. Thank you for this. It is good. Those are stepping stones so that when you get slapped in the face, you can say, thank you, Jesus, I got to suffer for you. Do you guys understand? I got written up and I was almost fired for my faith. Again, I'm sharing with you guys stories. God forbid I do anything less than preach Christ and be crucified. I had a chance to stand witness and I said to those who accused me. I said, thank you guys. And they looked at me funny like, uh, you're welcome. I got to preach the gospel. I got to preach Jesus Christ. I got to suffer for his name. There's nothing better than that. My wife's with Jesus. I get to suffer loss for the, for the cause of Christ. I am full of joy. Does it hurt? Yes. 1 Peter 4.13 we share in the sufferings of Christ, not for nothing, so that you may rejoice in his resurrection. You will know the joys and pleasure of the resurrection only with the backdrop of the suffering. Okay? He gives you beauty for ashes. Let me, newsflash, Hebrew, this is what it says. He gives you beauty Tachat underneath the ashes. Mm. The ashes are your, or rather, opposite. Ashes are literally underneath the beauty. Beauty means nothing if you have no ashes. Mm -hmm. A garment of splendor means nothing if, you have, if you've never had sackcloth. Mm -hmm. How do you know how to enjoy your food if you've never had it? How do you know to enjoy the house, the property, possessions you have if you've never had it or if you've never suffered loss? Dish falls on the ground. Jesus, thank you so much. I have a dish that can break on the floor. Thank you for the floor. You ever live on a dirt floor? That's why I encourage you guys, do mission trips. Do something difficult. Spend time in the projects. Be around some low uh, you know, section uh, government housing. And go love on them. Go ahead and do it. My wife... 
Oh my goodness, it blew me away. I never thought she would do this. We lived in an apartment complex that we were like, wow, this is a great place. Little did we know that three quarters of the residents were kicked out because there was a murder at the place. There were needles all in the, uh, you know, random needles, people just drugs in the ditch behind us. I'm like, oh, nice. There was a, a lady and her sister and they had some kids. Now my wife grew up in the South and she grew up, I'm sorry to say this, a very prejudiced upbringing. Thankfully that has changed. And she would tell me stories of, she really wanted to play with a nice little black girl. Um, and uh, she told me how certain family members said, you know, we, um, you have, we have no business with this kind. Broke my heart, because I grew up in a very multicultural area. I grew up in Fort Lauderdale, you know, and, and I went to school there and it didn't bother me any. I loved them. I mean, I used to go to Island Boy restaurants, a Jamaican restaurant, and funny story, 